Private Members Business, Order of the Day number one, motion relating to economic growth plan for Tasmania, resumption of debate. The question is that the debate be agreed to. I call the member for Braddon. Thank you, uh, <coughs> Deputy Speaker. <coughs> Excuse me. I'd like to thank my colleague, the member for Bass, for putting this important motion before the parliament. And like the member for Bass, uh, I too have very mixed feelings about this motion because as I reflected in my maiden speech just one week ago, we are a state of makers, producers, and that's what we do, and we do it well, Mr Deputy Speaker. Whether it be cheese or wine or machinery, vegetables and beef, on these fronts, we're second to none. Yet despite our reputation for excellence and innovation, Tasmania is found wanting on just about every significant economic and social indicator available. As this motion notes, Tasmania has the lowest gross state product per capita of any state, approximately 20 per cent lower than the national average. We have the highest unemployment rate at well over 8 per cent now, the lowest year 11 and 12 school completion rates, with less than 50 per cent of students in my electorate of Braddon going through and completing school to grade 12, and the highest number of people who will enter their retirement with little or no funds in their bank to help them live out their lives in relative comfort. Deputy Speaker, the dire economic situation in which Tasmania finds itself is not an aberration of accepted economic theory. It is not the doing of the Tasmanian people themselves, nor is it the result, as we've just heard uh, in the previous motion, of some uh, unfortunate natural disaster. No, uh, the reality is that Tasmania is languishing at the bottom of the economic and social ladder of this country as a direct result of what has been a disastrous era of green politics, intervention politics, uh, and then in the more recent times of the last four years, uh, a more or less a coalition of Labor and the Greens, with two Greens in the Cabinet. Uh, and this has had dire consequences on the confidence afforded to the Tasmanian economy. It's no coincidence, Mr Deputy Speaker, that when Labor linked arms with the Greens on the Treasury benches of both parliaments, in fact, uh, that the relatively strong economic position of the state began to falter. And over the last four years, 10,000 people have lost their full-time job uh, in the state of Tasmania. Tasmania has the highest unemployment rate of any state, which is somewhat hidden, I think, by the ever-growing number of fly-in and fly-out workers. I certainly meet more than enough of them on the aeroplanes each time I board. Uh, there's a hidden uh, problem also, Mr Deputy Speaker, in the high underemployment rate, where approximately 14 per cent of participating women and 18 per cent of men um, are really struggling to, to get the number of hours of work in a week uh, to balance the family budget, where they may have been getting 26, 28, 30 hours a week, they're now getting 16, 18 and maybe 20. And that's a huge impost uh, on our families. Uh, and sadly, we have the situation of the relocation of whole families from Tasmania to the mainland in search of employment. And you can't, uh, you can't question their motives for that. We have the lowest proportion of private sector employment compared to public sector employment, and that's a real concern to me. The highest dependency ratio percentage of any state or territory. The lowest great state product per capita, 20 per cent below the national average. Private business investment that is only 1.3 per cent of Australia's total private business investment and well below the national average over the last decade. And the lowest proportion of adults in Australia that have attained a year 12 qualification and the lowest retention rates to year 12 of any state. We have the highest proportion of population with a low income card, those receiving an age pension, a disability support pension, new start allowance, parenting payment, uh, uh, single parenting payment, parenting payment partnered or youth allowance. And sadly, Mr Deputy Speaker, we have the highest standardised death rate due to suicide than any other state, which breaks my heart. Highest proportion of dwellings provided for housing owned by either state or federal governments of any other state. The second longest, although I think it now, now may be the longest elective surgery waiting list in the country, and the highest proportion of people without superannuation coverage. So, Mr Deputy Speaker, where does that take us? I recall in the lead up to the uh, federal election uh, that my colleague who's here with me in the chamber, the, min, uh, the member for Lyons, Mr Hutchison, and the member for Bass, Mr Nikolic, that uh, we had several momentous discussions uh, with uh, the alternative prime minister. 
And whilst it would have been easy for us to say, Mr Prime Minister, all we need are you know, mountains of cash to hand out to our electorates to win our seats, that was far from our minds because we have all been around long enough to understand that that has been done well and truly to death. And as I said in my maiden speech, despite record levels of funding, uh, educational and health outcomes are still the worst in the nation. So it does go to show that it's not always about money, but it is about better policy. So these momentous discussions with the alternative Prime Minister led us and our Senate uh, colleagues to discuss the need for a Tasmanian uh, economic growth plan, where this plan would undertake uh, to highlight uh, some of the structural deficiencies in our Tasmanian economy. Uh, we also highlighted the needs of infrastructure, and I believe in that and through the consultation we have ended up with a document that whilst uh, some people might not necessarily see as exciting as a $25 million cheque coming their way, I believe if the Tasmanian people can grasp the reality of the needs that confront us and can be patient to see the structural change, I believe that we will see a definite improvement. Yeah. Mr Deputy Speaker, the Institute of Public Affairs uh, only a year or so ago calculated that the proportion of green bureaucrats employed by state governments across the country uh, was a very interesting piece of information. I'll cut to the chase uh, and say that uh, in Victoria, one green bureaucrat is employed for every 1,746 residents. Uh, have a guess uh, how many, Mr Deputy Speaker, although that's not your role to have a guess, but uh, have a guess how many in Tasmania. It's one for every 387 residents. I'm sure Mr Wilkie uh, will be the uh, independent member for Denison would be just as interested in that given he did put out a media alert this morning which I thank him for highlighting this debate. I might just take up one issue shortly but uh, I'm sure even Mr Wilkie would understand that's an un unacceptable situation in a population of 500,000 people. Um, and it's noted that we've doubled the number of green bureaucrats since 2007. Uh, investment, Mr Deputy, Speaker, is, Mr Deputy Speaker, in much needed infrastructure uh, has been foregone in my state in favour of public sector growth with no multiplier or wealth generating benefits. If you want to see benefits, you give money, um, sorry, sorry, you give confidence to those that can invest their own money um, and you get behind them. You put in the structural changes that are required, you put in the policy agendas that are required. Uh, you don't just go and increase bureaucratic numbers. In the face of ever increasing Tasmanian bureaucracy, the coalition hasn't uh, initiated in its growth plan a one stop shop for environmental approvals. I might have a little bit more to say in the debate uh, on the environmental amendment uh, this afternoon in the chamber, uh, but that has been widely welcomed uh, by businesses. You know, small businesses are the real job creators and often are more resilient to economic downturns and have a stronger commitment to maintaining their employment base during difficult times. However, small business to get started and to prosper uh, need to be released from their tax burdens, such as the carbon tax, the provision of modest company tax relief and the cutting of red and green tape. It does bring me to the media alert of the independent member uh, for Denison, which I said I did welcome, uh, and his concluding statement was there must be a fairer deal for Tasmania's 32,000 small businesses, many of which are being crushed by high power and sewerage bills, granted, and I agree, excessive rates, payroll and land taxes and the predatory behaviour of Woolworths and Coles. Um, I would humbly uh, just ask uh, that uh, the member uh, acknowledge that uh, we went to the election to get rid of a massive tax that we've just proven, or we haven't, but uh, the Productivity Commission, I think it was, has proven has cost the economy $6 billion and basically made no difference to uh, carbon emission reductions. So I was a little bewildered uh, to the member for Denison through you, Mr Deputy Speaker, that there was no sign uh, in his concluding comments uh, of his support for the repealing of the carbon tax, which I think would be welcome, given that we have one, I believe, certainly in Tasmania, a mandate for that, uh, and it is certainly contributing to the high uh, energy costs of Tasmania, and it's certainly contributing to the ongoing costs uh, to small business. So I would welcome uh, his support on that. Uh, there are a number of other issues which obviously time won't allow me to speak about, but obviously freight, as I mentioned in my maiden speech, continues to be a recurring theme in any discussion about our future. Um, and uh, I know that uh, my member next to me from Lyons and the member for Bass, we are absolutely committed to getting the best outcome from that. Um, we, we believe that there are solutions to the vagrancies within that system. 
We're actually also suffering, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, from the loss of a sole international shipping container operator, and I welcome the, uh, the initiative of the state Liberals in the lead-up to the state campaign to put uh, $11 million a year on the table to try and entice a private investment into that market. Mr Deputy Speaker, as I said last week, we have such great potential, but we are being held back and it's our commitment to ensure that we get the structural change that we need.